Hello everybody, I'm Jeff Phillips and welcome to this week's webisode. Every week I bring in a new business to share tips and ideas or advice about their business and industry. And today I have Kim West, the sleep lady. And Kim, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Sure. Why don't you explain to everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a clinical social worker for 21 years, can't believe that, and I am fondly called the sleep lady by actually a three-year-old named me that, and I have been helping families and children all over the world help them get a good night's sleep. Okay, well, great. So why don't we get right into it, and why don't you tell us right. some reasons why kids or babies don't sleep through the night? Mm-hmm. So I like to think of five typical ones, uh, the most common, uh, and some of them are counterintuitive. So the first one would be that most of our children, believe it or not, are going to bed too late. Um, actually, they say we're going to bed too late as adults too and not getting enough sleep. So our children need about 10 to 11 hours sleep for the first 10 years of their lives. So I always tell parents, do the math backwards. If they have to, you know, if they need 11 hours of sleep, they need to wake up at 7 a.m. They need to be asleep by 8 p.m. Lots of times with activities and school and that's not happening. So that tends to cause some night wakenings and other disturbances. So that's number one, too late of a bedtime. Number two, for our children that are under three and a half or four, it's nap deprivation. Because we tend to think as parents that if our children nap less, then they'll sleep better at night, which is the exact opposite of what's true. Even though I get that that makes sense logically, it's not what happens um, physically and biologically. So nap deprivation and then going to bed too drowsy. So meaning mom or dad are putting you to sleep or are putting you in that drowsy state. And so then you, your child doesn't learn the skill of putting themselves to sleep. And then they can't apply it during the middle of the night to put themselves back to sleep or at naps. Okay. And that tends to sort of Kind of get worse and change its face over the course of of their lives and then uh, the fourth one is if we respond inconsistently so if we're all over the place as parents you know oh sometimes i'll lie down with you oh sometimes i'll feed you oh sometimes i'll rub your back then our children just don't know what to expect mm -hmm. and they tend to wake up more often and take longer to go to sleep um, so that's a, always a surprising one. So no matter what sleep method you choose, always pick one that you can follow through with and do it consistently. Because we all hear that in parenting, that our children need us to be consistent. And it's really true, especially with sleep coaching. And the fourth one is rule out underlying medical conditions. And this one often gets missed. So the common ones are allergies, asthma, particularly the medications used to treat asthma, uh, reflux, and uh, the fourth one is obstructive sleep apnea, which is very underdiagnosed in children, usually, usually caused by enlarged tonsils and adenoids. So just real quickly, the top uh, three signs of that is if your child has trouble, or I guess four, trouble going to sleep, early rising, that's you can't undo no matter what you do. Um, and they tend to snore, mouth breathe, sweat or have restless sleeping. You really need to go to your pediatrician and rule out sleep apnea. So those are the, the five most common uh, reasons that cause our children not to be able to sleep through the night. Very good. So does any of this have to, does any of this tie in or is it correlated with early rising? Yeah, uh, yes it does. Several of them. Actually early rising is one of the most popular topics I'm asked about. Um, both in consultation and on my blog because it's very hard for you and I to function at that 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Our body is in light sleep. Our body is secreting hormones to keep us in sleep. So we're sort of drugged and not making the best decisions when our kids come pitter pattering into the room or our babies cry out. Um, so it's very, it's really challenging early rising. So the four most common, or the four most common causes of early rising are, as you can see some of the overlap here, going to bed too late, nap deprivation, too big of a wakeful window from afternoon nap to bedtime, which really should only be for kids about four or five hours. Um, otherwise they start to get overtired. Uh, going to bed too drowsy because if you don't know how to put yourself to sleep at bedtime, the easiest time when we're the most tired, we have darkness, the day behind us, we definitely can't apply it at 5 a.m., right? So I always tell parents, like, I know for me, if I wake up at 5 and I start 
thinking and my mind starts going, forget it. Right. I'm going to have a trouble going back to sleep. It's much harder of a harder skill. So too big of a wakeful window and too drowsy. Um, and then again, underlying medical conditions because that sleep apnea can cause early rising. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you get a lot of comments from mom saying, uh, going to bed too late is going to keep her from, or going to make her rise early. It just doesn't, like I said, it doesn't make exactly. sense. Exactly. So. But it's really the exact opposite. You yeah. want your child to get that uh, quality sleep on the front end and it will help them sleep longer. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're, you know, spring break is coming up. Summer vacations are going to be coming along soon. Mm -hmm. You know, if a child has a good sleeping habit and then, you know, may stay up later during vacation times mm -hmm. or whatnot, mm -hmm. how do you get them back into that good sleeping habit? Yeah. So that's really common. I usually try to, well, of course, depending on how old your child is, you can have a discussion with them and say, hey, this is special. We're on vacation. Maybe the last one or two nights before vacation, you could start eking back, you know, that, that bedtime. And if they do, if they're over seven-ish years old, that's when they can start to sleep in, by the way. Okay. Um, so if they start to do that on vacation, maybe that last day or two before you go back home, start waking them up earlier so that they'll be ready for an earlier bedtime. So a slow adjustment, mm -hmm. um, that will really happen. That will really help. What I usually find though that happens on vacation, especially with younger children who maybe were newly sleep coached before going on vacation, let's say even if in the last six months, is that we completely regress on vacation. You know, and sometimes for good reason. You know, all of a sudden your baby's in the pack and play in your room. You might have other people in the house. You don't want them all to wake up and they're like ruin their vacation. So you bring them into your bed, you feed them, you do whatever works. And then when you get back home, you got to redo everything. So I always tell parents like the bad, there's bad news and good news about that, you know, so the good news is, is they did have the skill. So it should be quicker for them to remember it as you enforce it. Um, the bad news is, is they tend to do what I call shrieking when you go home and put them into the bed. Um, it's that because they're confused. It's the intermittent reinforcement shriek. It's sort of them saying, oh my gosh, what are you doing? <laughs> and why aren't we doing that thing we did back, you know, at the beach house mm -hmm. um, and not that thing we were doing, you know, months ago. And so, again, if you can just get through that and be consistent and stay with them as they remember the skill, it will get better faster and you'll get back on the track. What happens a lot of times is parents come home and then they don't readdress it. And then, and then things start to fall apart more and more and they have to completely start all over again. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Well, very good. Yeah. Fantastic information, interesting information, and hopefully some of you parents out there got a few helpful tips. And if you want to continue this conversation online, please feel free to fill out the box below. And if you want to find out more about Kim West and the Sleep Lady, check out the website at the end of this video. That's all we have for this, this week. See you next time. Bye-bye.